بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عسى الله أن يجعل بينكم وبين الذين عاديتم منهم مودة والله قدير والله غفور رحيم وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم اللهم لا عيش إلا عيش الآخرة فاغفر الأنصار والمهاجرة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honorable scholars, respected brothers, elders, mothers and sisters it is a basic fact of life that nothing can be obtained in this material world without payment. There is a price to every article, there is a price to every item. Whether cash or kind, one has to pay. Logically speaking, every buyer wants to give less and secure more. And if perchance it's reversed, he has to give more and receives less, then this constitutes loss, failure and misfortune and often in the commercial circles we hear people say, I burnt my hands never again. It is rather tragic and unfortunate that we do not apply the same theory, phenomena and principle when it comes to the aspect of sin, transgression and vice. By Allah, in whose control is my life, the price a sinner pays to sustain one sin, whether it's an illicit relation, or a gambling addiction, or a substance abuse, it is far greater than the supposed pleasure he receives. The first price every sinner pays the first price every sinner pays without exception he has to bid farewell to happiness from his life permanently and let me not mince my words there will be a thrill in his life when he pops the pill there will be an excitement in his life when he's online chatting with a strange woman there will be a kick in his life when he's pulling the machines and gambling. But bliss and happiness will be unheard of in his life. Depression and misery is synonymous to the sinner. Depression and misery is synonymous to the sinner. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahmatullah alayhi, the great giant, the great scholar, the second Umar, who once again revived the justice in the world. Who once again revived the justice in the world. He one day seen his son on the day of Eid and his son was clad with a simple garb while the general youth were clad in exclusive beautiful new dress so as a father as much as he wanted to discipline his son for a moment he felt that my son might be marginalized he might be victimized he might be isolated people will look at him he's the only boy wearing old clothes so the dad was moved by the simple garb of his son into tears. So the son engages his dad. And he says, Ma yubikika ya abi. Oh my dad, what makes you cry? It's a topic of its own to reflect and introspect on how profound the interaction of the pious was between father and son. 
This is the common dialogue of father and son today. By and large, an average young man today considers his father to be an ATM machine. Put your card in and draw money that you want. That's all. So Amr ibn As radiallahu to digress, but to expound on this sentiments. He is in the throes of death. He is the conqueror of Egypt. When we went to Egypt with the grace of Allah, we went to the masjid. We visited the grave. He is in the throes of death, a critical moment, a sensitive moment. He slips into a coma. After a little while he gains consciousness. He slips into a coma. He gains consciousness. His son Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asr was present. He nudges his father. He says, Dad, the moment is sensitive. The time is critical. You are about to bid farewell. You are on the verge of taking your last breath. I don't wish to be insensitive to your trauma. But once you pass away, you will be gone permanently. Who will ever tell me the agony of death? If I'm not asking too much of you while you die, dying, can you relate your pain so that I can reflect? Ya abati sifli al maut. What were the pious? In the agony of death, in the throes of death, the son engages his dad. Dad, tell me what, it, what does it feel like? فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذٍ تَنْظُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ فَلَوْلَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُونَ Why not when the soul reaches the collarbone? وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ And we are closer to the dying person than you are. وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ But you see us not. فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينٍ تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you claim there's no retribution, and if you claim there's no repercussion, and if you claim there's no consequences post-death, then you're the dying man who hold his soul. Hold your soul. Tarja'oonaha. Return it. In kuntum sadiqeen. If you are honest in your claim. فَأَمَّا إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ فَرَوْحٌ وَرَيْحَانٌ فَرَوْحٌ وَرَيْحَانٌ If he's amongst the noble, for him is fragrance, for him is sustenance, for him is mercy. So the son asked the dad, Dad, tell me what does the agony of death feel like? So the father says to the son, كَأَنَّ جِبَالَ الدُّنْيَا فَوْقَ صَدْرِي كَأَنَّ جِبَالَ الدُّنْيَا فَوْقَ صَدْرِي That is why one scholar was asked, why don't you speak on contemporary issues? He said, can there be something more contemporary than death? Can there be something more contemporary than death? Oh my son, it appears to me, as if the mountains of the entire world are exclusively resting on my chest. Oh my son, it appears to me as if the mountains bearing in mind the jungles and the forests of the world, what an intellectually stimulating discussion pre-death. You and I don't have the ability to speak on that level in our senses, why are we conscious and focused? You're slipping away from this world. These were people who valued their time. That is why I often say, when people are sitting and relaxing, they say, we're killing time. You're not killing time, my brother. Time is killing you. The clock is ticking and time is killing. I was here a year ago. Has a year lapsed? Has a year passed? Has the wheel turned? Is it 12 months down? My words, my words. Oh my Lord, soon will the day come when I will be lying before you and the angel of death will knock my door. And then he slips into a coma again. There is a prolonged silence. The sun holds his breath in. 
He's concerned about the agony of his father. But he wishes that his father could kindly complete that sentence. He gains consciousness. Dad, my apologies. I sympathize with your trauma. You were telling me you feel like as if the mountains of the entire world on your chest. Could you be kind enough to complete that sentence? And I feel as if I'm trying to breathe from the eye of a needle. And I feel as if I'm trying to get a breath from the eye of a needle. And he slips into his agony never to stand up and gone permanently. And what were his last words? Allahumma la qawiyun fa'antasir. وَلَا بَرِيٌّ فَأَعْتَذِرْ وَلَا مُسْتَنْكِرٌ بَلْ مُسْتَغْفِرٌ اللهم إنك عمرتنا فعصينا ونهيتنا فمن تهينا ولا يسعنا إلا عفوك He has this dialogue with his son He then lifts his hand He said, Oh my Lord, you've instructed me in my life to do many Unfortunately, I did not comply You prohibited me Tragically, I did not restrain. Oh my Lord, I don't have a defense. I don't have an argument. I concede guilt. I admit all wrong. Allahumma la qawiyyun fa'antasir. I'm not strong that I'm going to challenge the angel of death. I'm going to engage him. I'm going to refute him. Wala mustankirun. And I don't refute any of my crimes. Bal mustaghfirun. My hands are down. I apologize and concede. Saying these words, he left the world. May Allah make that discussion a reality for us. Say Amin brothers. That becomes the topic at home. That becomes the atmosphere at home. That becomes the dialogue at home. Remember a child who excels in academics and he has multiple A symbols. That's merely a reflection that he has committed to memory the work that has been imparted to him. That doesn't make him an A in the eyes of Allah. That only is an indication of his skills to commit to memory. What if the information imparted was atheism which he committed to memory? Do you still refer to him as an A student? He's, he's, he's committed it to memory, that's about it. Does that make him great and excel? We'll have to critically analyze the material that has been imparted. And yes, if he has imbibed that, and coupled with imbibing it, does he practically execute it? then perhaps we could elevate him to the pedestal of an ensemble. But let's not be blown away by the achievements and the merits of our children by merely memorizing anything. So Umar ibn Abdulaziz rahmatullah sees his son on the day of Eid and he's clad in a simple garb and he tears. So the son tells the dad, Ma yubkik. Dad, what makes you cry? He said, Akhsha an yankasira qalbuk yawm al إذ رأك الصبيان بهذا القميص الخلق My son, I'm going to feel so hurt when each of the youngsters will be walking around in society clad in exclusive garb wearing an affluent dress and then the dads will look at them there will be a tear of joy there will be a spark of excitement there will be a moment of happiness only to know you're the only youngster that is wearing simple and ordinary clothes I just hope you don't fall prey to depression and you don't fall prey to isolation and you're not marginalized by the youth. The young boy of that time had greater sanity than the elders of today. He said, Dad, since when depression was for the man who wore old clothes? And since when happiness was for the man who wore new clothes, by Allah in his control is my life. Depression and misery is inseparable from the man who disobeys Allah. Depression and misery is inseparable from the man who disobeys Allah. When Umar ibn Abdulaziz heard this, he was moved to tears. وَقَبَّلَهُ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ He kissed him between his eyes. He said, my son, no son has ever made his father proud as you have made me with this statement of yours. So if you have raised children like this, you're a father. That is why in English they say, fortunate is he whose children run into his arms even when his hands are empty. If my child runs into my arms when they have money, 
Then what's so great about it? Even the Qarun, then the Fir